Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mic Check Podcast. This is T Word, the People's Champ, here with my co host Q, aka Right on Q. We're back in the building, and today we're going to talk about Caleb Plant versus David Benavidez and their pay per view worthiness, as well as the marketing strategy for Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, let's get into it. What's good with you, Q? Nothing much, man. You know, um, this fight card, you know, I would say. Uh, in my opinion, while it is a worthy fight to watch, and any boxing fan that wants to, you know, watch this fight, you know, it definitely is something to, to consider uh, watching. I don't know that it's worth the price tag that's being listed. Um, and this is where I think in boxing, I think in general, boxing has to kind of uh, convert with the times. This is one of those perfect cards that really, in my mind, should have been fifty dollars. And the reason that I say that is because this is a fight between two guys who don't like each other, who we know don't like each other, who we think and we assume will go in there and create a firefight. So that in itself is worth watching. But mm -hmm. then you look and you go down the, you know, you go down the, the undercard and you really don't have another highlight matchup between an A side and a B side that you can go into that fight saying, okay, this is a fight that a lot of people are looking forward to in the boxing community. So when that's the case, if you are going to have to put it on pay-per-view because of purse demands, I would argue that a $75 price tag is a little bit steep, especially when you're, um, you know, relying on people to buy this fight outright. And there's not as many people splitting pay-per-views like they used to back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that it's worth the $75. I'm going to spend it because I want to see the main event. But I kind of feel jilted sometimes when I buy these $75 to $80 pay-per-views. And really, I only have genuine interest in one fight. What's your thoughts? Okay, so I mean, I think it's a fair assessment. I, I wouldn't be mad at a fifty dollars fight. Let's be clear. Um, I, I agree that at a value, it could be a little bit cheaper. Um, and I think that Showtime and and you know maybe they need to start to consider the different levels mm -hmm. and then price accordingly. Um, I felt like, just as an example, I felt like Jamal Charlo versus Brian Castaño too, along with Jerron Ennis Jamal, fighting. Jamal, 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 yeah, Jamal, yeah, Jamal, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, I felt like Mel versus Castaño, along with Boots fighting for a number one ranking. I thought that that was worth twenty bucks. If they ever say, "Hey, man, this fight's gonna be twenty dollars on pay per view," I'd happily pay that. That's not bad. Um, I thought right. that those two fights would have been worth it. When I start to evaluate what a card is worth, I look at everything that's on the card. Let's go ahead and discuss. You've got Jesus Ramos versus Joey Spencer, Chris Colbert versus Jose Jose Valenzuela. They so got Showtime versus El Rayo, and then you've got Cody Crowley versus Abel Ramos. I think that those are four pretty good fights, in my opinion. Um. Obviously, the main event is way on another level. These are your elite of the elite. The other guys are just good fighters. And I think they're in good matchups, good 50-50 matchups. That's kind of the thing for me. None of these look one-sided, in my opinion. So I think these are good fights. And that is price cost-worthy to me. Um, I do agree it could be a little bit less. But like you, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay for what I want to see. Right. You know what I mean? So um, I think the model does need to shift a little bit. I think there's going to be way less people in our mindset and there's going to be a lot more people streaming this fight though. Oh yeah. I mean, this is a fight that's not going to do well on pay-per-view. I'm just going to come out and be honest with you. Um, yeah. If this fight does 200,000 pay-per-view buys, that's a successful night for them. And that's how low the bar is. I don't think that's what they're expecting either. I think they probably going to be happy with like 125. Well, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying this fight does like it caps out at 200. And yeah. more to my point is the the price tag. Fox changed this, and they did this when they did uh, what was it? Uh, Frank Martin, or not Frank Martin? Excuse me. Um, who was the dude that the dude that lost to Anthony Joshua? I don't know why I'm dropping a blank on his name. Uh, um, uh, Andy Ruiz. Charles Martin. Thank you. Oh, Charles, Martin. Okay. Charles Martin when he fought against Luis Ortiz. On New Year's Day a couple of years ago, you remember that fight? Yeah, yeah. They had right. it like a casino New Year's uh, theater hall too. on New Year's Day. That fight was like fifty bucks. The same thing happened when Ruiz fought Ortiz on Fox. I think that fight was like fifty bucks, or maybe it was the Ariola fight. One of those two fights was not the seventy-five dollar price tag. You can't tell me as a consumer, right? 
I'm going to pay $75 for a unification fight between Errol Spence and your Danny's Ugas, and then turn around and tell me I'm going to pay the same price for a fight between Caleb Plant and David Benavidez for no yeah. belts, for no titles, um, two years too late. Like, th that's the part for me. If you were going to have it at that $75 mark, you got to give me something else if you want that fight to go over that $200, that $200,000 mark. You, you, yeah. you got to throw something else in there. If you want 200,000 pay-per-view buys, there's got to be at least one more fight in there that's a great fight. You described it perfectly. Three good fights on the undercard. Mm -hmm. But that's the best that they are, is good yeah. fights. They're not fights that people were demanding or fights that people have been talking about. I haven't heard anybody mention any of these three fights since they... Yeah. No, nah, and we're already in March and outside of inside of boxing circles, um, outside of boxing circles, those fights aren't being talked about. I mean, you got two prospect level guys that are coming mm -hmm. off a loss, which I think mm -hmm. makes it really intriguing. I'm really interested to see what Chris Coburn looks like at 130 and what Elroy is going to look like. I mean, at 135 coming back. So or or whatever their weight is. What is it? Um, lightweight, lightweight, 135. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. Um, so but most people don't care about that fight. And it's buried on the undercard, but on the televised first portion. So I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes. Um, if they hit 200K, I'll be surprised. I think the company's expectation is six figures, 100 to 125. If they do that, I think they'll be happy. Um, but that's only going to embolden them to do it again, which could hurt us as boxing fans. If anything, you almost need it to kind of flop a little bit yes. because it's going to keep them from doing it in the future. Mm -hmm. um, because that's that's how business works. If something's right. not working, especially the money gets hurt, you're going to see changes. So I want to shift gears and get into the Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia. I think mm -hmm. um, we're, we're opposed on this particular topic strict simply because I think part of what I do for a living makes me look at digital marketing and the way that I think Showtime is approaching this fight. It gives me a different perspective. So I'm going to throw it to you first, and then I'll just kind of rebuttal based on what your what your perspective is. Yeah, I mean, for, for me more so, I mean, I understand the kind of change in dynamic, right? You got two guys in Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia who, you know, have large followings on social media. Um, it's a fight that a lot of people are talking about on social media. But I think the thing that maybe is getting a little bit underestimated is the gravitational pull that both of these guys will have to get these same people who are talking about the fights on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, to go and click that buy button. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about it on social media before, but these two guys have a combined almost 15 million followers on Instagram alone not mm -hmm. including maybe some duplicate followers on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, um, I watched it at like 12. Right, but realistically, Gervonta hasn't capped 300 yet on pay-per-view, and Ryan's never been on pay-per-view. So right. I don't know that this fight is going to be the bombshell that everybody expects it to be, because I think that the people, these two fighters' fans, because they're from such a younger demographic, you're gonna get a lot of these kids that number one, these people don't, can't afford it, right? Because they're younger, they may not have the affluence or the, the funds to pay for all of it. Or they surely just don't want to because they have access to illegal streaming and everything else like that. So I guess my issue is, is that because Showtime was resistant to, you know, do the traditional push of this fight from a traditional promotional standpoint, Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's going to hurt it even more because, you know, we're, they're, they're shooting this fight to a younger audience. So I'm not really yeah. sure how that's going to help the promotion as far as buys is concerned. So when I think about um, converting your followers into finance, um, I'm very I'm very in tune with how that works. Um, for those that don't know, I actually do that for a living. I help companies take a following and convert it into dollars. Um, it's, it's digital marketing. Um, when you talk about marketing to a younger demographic, it's it's a misnomer when people talk about the younger generation not really spending money. The younger generation will spend money on stuff that they have no business spending on. More frivolously, it's harder to get a older person to actually come off money for an extra thing for just the pay-per-view or just you know the dessert at dinner younger people are like man it's yolo 
So to be honest, if you could get their attention and make them think they need to be a part of it, you're more likely to get those younger people to spend that money because they're actually a little bit more frivolous with their cash. They're more likely to get, hey man, I got $20. I got 20 also. Let's get one more person or two more people and now we're gonna pay for this fight and we're gonna watch it at so-and-so's house. Or we all gonna pull it up and cast it to the TV from our phone. You know, they're gonna find a different way to get access to it because they wanna find out, will Tank knock Ryan out or will Ryan actually overcome the mountain who is Tank Davis and actually knock him out? There's enough intrigue in it for those people to want to take some time and watch the fight. Um, I could tell you for sure, for example, my son, my youngest is 19. He knows who Ryan is and he'll probably watch the fight because he wants to see. He thinks Ryan will win. He's actually said that. So there's some interest from him, him and his buddies. They might want to get the fight. You know what I mean? So I think that it's a good this. If there's any a fight to experiment with this particular strategy, this is the one. Because let's say you wash out their followers, like you mentioned, 15 million combined. When you wash out the dupes, let's put it at 10 million. 300,000 is what, 3%? Mm -hmm. That's not much at all. So you're saying we just need to convert 3% of your following into sales. That's just 3%. That number's probably going to be closer to like 8%. 800,000 isn't unreasonable. I don't think that it's a bad strategy. I think if you're going to try it with any two current fighters that don't have belts this is the two to do it yeah and i mean i can understand the the thinking behind trying a new strategy for digital because obviously you and i have talked off camera about the transition that showtime is going to uh where you know their their app is going to be merging so they're trying some new strategies to see if there's going to be a way to make a more sustainable uh buyer base because yeah. at some point i would assume it may not be immediate but my guess is, is that a few years down the line, there's a potential that maybe they get off of traditional cable because people are cutting the cord left and right. I mean, you still have people that are not and want to keep their cable box and like their 250, you know, cable subscription channels. But a lot of people now, including myself personally, you know, it's been multiple years. The last time that I had a cable box was 2018. And ever since then, you know, I've just streamed what I needed and the live sports I get, I get it from my live sports apps and rock it like that. The one interesting dynamic I think that will kind of be determined soon is will the total number of pay-per-view buys that Showtime puts out if they do put anything out, will that include the pay-per-view buys on DAZN and will you see an uptick of people using DAZN as the option to use for this fight specifically, because if my understanding is correct, I don't believe that Showtime is doing this fight for anything less than 75. And I believe uh, DAZN's uh, pay-per-view price has not been above $60. Yeah, the $60 pay-per-view price. $99. Right, six, so we might as well call yeah, it yeah, 60. Mm -hmm. um, for Canelo fights. I can't yeah. imagine them charging their subscribers more for this fight than a Canelo fight when he's been the face of their American boxing scene for a couple of years now. So if you're asking me and you have Showtime and the zone and you're getting the same broadcast and you're getting the same TV signal, I'm saying that more people are more likely to properly go with the zone because they're saving themselves 15 bucks. You already have a Showtime subscription. You already have a zone subscription. If I pay 60 bucks to get the fight on the zone, why would I want to turn around and pay 75 to get it on show? So, but that's the thing. So if this is going to depend, so now we're going to get into a little bit of the minutia, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have the zone, depending on what package you're on, you could be paying as much as $25 a month baseline. And then you add the 60. So that month for the month of April, you're going to pay your $25 flat fee and then your $60 pay-per-view. It's okay. $85. If you have Showtime just by itself, not a Paramount bundle like some of us, you have the Showtime app by itself. That's about either $8.99 or $9.99. Let's go with the $10 and then the $75 pay-per-view. It's $85 either way. Mm -hmm. So it just depends if you subscribe to both. The smart money is to pay the zone because you're only adding $60. Mm -hmm. um, but if, you, if, if you're on the outside looking in and you have to pick, you could go mm -hmm. either way. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. Most of the last few major fights on Showtime, the month of, you can actually get it free. They're giving a free trial. 
All you need is a new email address. Hey, for everybody out there watching, even if you've had Showtime before, if you want to see some fights and there's a particular month that you're interested in, get your email address, create you a, a trial account and get your free 30 days and watch all that boxing. I think March is a good month to have it or maybe even April. That's the way to go. But that being said, it really just depends on what you're already paying for. Like if you're like me and you, where we have both already, obviously it makes sense to get the pay-per-view on the zone especially if the broadcasting is all going to be the same anyway um yeah. i don't even know if there's going to be the zone branding on the screen um because showtime has the rights to start off go ahead no which i think is the interesting part because i don't know if you saw this because we didn't talk about it before we got on today but for the first time i the zone logos at the press conference because mm. up until this point any kind of graphics any kind of posting anything it has not had anything to do with the zone which i thought was really really interesting because most times even when a guy crosses over you know and he's going to the other network and it's not even going to be on the flag the doesn't come with him on, the logo is at least there even if it's a two-inch logo it's there but it had not been until yesterday at the first press conference so i wonder if there's going to be some integration I watch a guy, and for all of our, our boxing fans out there, if you're interested in getting some UK fight news, if you're interested in getting um, some interesting takes from a guy who's pretty well known in the UK for fighting, look up a guy named Ade Oladipo. Uh, he has his own YouTube page, but he's the main presenter for DAZN currently. Uh, mm -hmm. He has already said that DAZN has told him that he's going to be going out to Las Vegas the week of the fight, and they're going to be doing the DAZN boxing show with Ak and Barak. He's going to be there, and that he's going to be doing something on fight night. They have not been told what yet, but he's yeah. going to be doing something. So I wonder if they're going to be doing some kind of integration, even if it's just one person from DAZN doing something with the broadcasting. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and that would make sense. You know how they kind of do the cutaways. I mean, I could see Brian Custer's going to be there, but I think from the DAZN side, at those times where typically when you're watching Showtime, you would see Brian Custer in between fights. I think that's where you'll probably see Ade on their side, on their broadcast. They're going to go to him. And then during the fights for the call, um, more than likely the Showtime broadcast team is going to cover it. I'm, I'm, con I'm considering where the logos are going to be positioned. You know, that little Showtime is always in that bottom right-hand corner. I'm wondering if there's going to be a DAZN in the bottom left or maybe it'll come in and out or it'll just be on the ring. So they, they do get the credibility of somebody who's helping furnish this fight to the to the viewing public so it's going to be interesting how they execute i don't think it's going to change the product at all because they still got to get in there and throw hands and that's right. the most important right. thing but definitely interested how the execution is going to be um before we close it out you know i did want to share with the people be sure to tune in and support this sport no matter where you decide to buy it just buy it just get it because if they can see the support and it works then maybe they'll do it again They'll get more and we'll get, yeah, we'll get more guys to sit down, get the networks to sit down, everybody getting rich. And as fans, we'll get to see more of the fights that we want to see. So this is a moment where I feel like whether you like Tank or not, whether you like Ryan or not, whether you like either fighter, but you like boxing, support it. And let's see if we could encourage them with our dollars to give us the fights that we want to see with guys crossing over. Even if this one isn't the greatest or most desirable, it's still an opportunity to see if it works and we should support that. What you got, Q? Yeah, 100%, man. I'm, I'm in agreement on you with that. I mean, ultimately, when these cross-promotional fights happen, if the numbers match up and the fighters make a decent purse, but they're not overpaid, if the network makes money, while we don't like the network to be, you know, gouging the fighters, of the money they should be getting. Ultimately, if the networks make money from a fight, they're gonna be willing to come back to the table and do another cross promotional fight. And everybody needs to keep in mind, this fight goes well. Let's just say in a hypothetical situation that Tank wins this fight. What's gonna be the next fight that everybody's gonna be talking about on the cross promotional side? It's gonna be a fight between Shakur Stevenson and Tank. It's gonna be a fight between Devin Haney and Tank. It's going to be a fight between Lomachenko and Tank, which we've been begging for for five years. So that will just open the floodgates that, look, now we have some data on how Tank does in a cross-promotional setting. I think it's worth trying to see if we can do it again with another fighter. 
Absolutely. So guys, we're going to leave it right there. Be sure to go ahead and leave your comments down there below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We do appreciate your feedback. So we're going to get up out of here until the next time. This has been T. That's Q. We out.